Hey folks, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today I want to show you how to measure response time and more specifically response time for DNS. This will work with anything, but I'm using DNS this time. I'm going to start with um, the command prompt. We're going to go through Wireshark and then we're going to end up in Excel. So a couple of free, a couple of tools. Excel's not free, but you can always use OpenCalc if you'd like. It doesn't really matter and that would work as well. So the first thing we have to do is figure out our script and, and you'll know exactly what I mean in a moment why I call it a script. So the commands that I'm going to execute are ipconfig slash flush DNS. So that'll flush all the DNS entries from my cache. Then I do an NS lookup for a domain. In this case, it's techfirm.com and I'm going to look it up using Google's public DNS. And then we've also got this and we're going to look it up against our router. So now the discussion starts. How many tests do I do? How often do I do? What order do I do it in? It does not matter. It's entirely up to you. Uh, the only thing you have to do is be consistent and document what you did. So you could literally, if this is the only test I want to do, I could just do a copy and paste and paste and paste and paste. Done. So I've got a whole bunch of tests here now, right? Um, I try to stick with a minimum of five tests. Uh, and then when I'll drop the low, I'll drop the high. I'll keep three or average three, depending on what I'm trying to do and I'm good to go. So now that I've got my script, you can either save it as a batch file if you want, or I can just do a select all, control A, right click, copy, go to the command prompt, and right click. It will paste everything in there. So there, it's executing all those commands that I have in that notepad. There you go. So you've got some options there. I'm leaving entirely up to you. I'm just giving you different ways of doing the same thing. So now what? Well, now we're going to bring Wireshark into this. So from Wireshark, what we're going to do is create a filter. So first thing we do is make sure you have your adapter selected. Go to your captures, capture address bar. We're going to type in UDP port 53 because UDP port 5353 is DNS. Double click on the Wi-Fi adapter. Go back to the command prompt, right click and off it goes to the races. It's also important right now you don't have your web browser open, you don't have your email open, so you don't get a lot of um, extraneous DNS stuff coming into your trace. And when you're done, you hit stop. Done. Cool, right? So now we've got our trace file of all of our stuff. Now, there's this is left over from before. Let me get rid of this column here because you're not going to have that. So the first thing people want to know is uh, what do I do in Wireshark all the time? So the first thing we do is see all these colors. Uh, for some people, depending on I know some people this actually creates a headache. For me, it does as well for long periods of time. So I always turn the colors off because I really don't need them right now. They don't serve a purpose. So I can just turn that off. There you go. We don't need our bytes. We don't need our detail, but we're going to keep our list pane. So view, bytes, click, gone. View, packet details, gone. There you go. We've got some more space. Now, we are going to need the detail pane. I just realized. Sorry about that. We're going to just need it just for one moment and then we can get rid of it. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the response time. So we, if you, within Wireshark, if you pick a query response, here's one right here, I just randomly picked one. Scroll down and you'll see a time. This is the actual um, response time, the time between the query and the actual response for that specific transaction ID. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to apply, it should really, it should say add as a column because apply as a column throws a lot of people off. So I'm just going to click that. There it is. See? So now I've got the column right there representing the response time. Unfortunately, I have all these little blanks because these are the commands, right? And this value only appears for the responses. So let's do a display filter to only show responses. So within DNS, if you open that up, right underneath the transaction ID, you will see flags, query, standard query, response, no error, right? Right click, apply that as a filter, select it. Boom. Done. See? So now I've got a trace of exactly what I want within Excel. So from here we go to font, file, export packet dissection as CSV. And then this is where you can drop the file wherever you like. You just save it and you're good to go. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to open it up within, I'll just use Excel, but again, you don't need to use Excel for this. You can use whatever you want. I'm just going to size this up a little bit. There's it's a real trace that I did for a client, right? So it doesn't look like what I just showed you in my script, but you, you'll get it. Um, now that you have this CSV, sometimes you have to go to data, text to columns, 
and then you have to tell there's a delimiter and all that kind of stuff, right? Mine just knew, it just opened it up and I've got everything in its own column. Great, good for me. And because I have the response times right here, I did a simple test where I used one name server a bunch of times and then I moved on to the next server a bunch of times. And the reason why I did that was because now that name server is all together, right? So as you can see, oh, sorry, wrong side, this side. So as you can see, I've got them all grouped together, nice and neat. If you didn't, you can always do a data sort in Excel and you'd be fine as well. And now we can just simply highlight those response times for that server. So I'll do one right here, I don't know, like this for example. Insert for a graph, do a line graph. And there you go, there's our response time. And now you can actually have multiple um, data points uh, and you can actually compare series if you'd like. So I'll show you what mine ended up looking like, just so you'll see it. There we go. So this is three of them, and you can see two of them are right about here, and this one is way on the bottom. It's the fastest. It happens to be their local DNS, uh, forwarder, cache, server, whatever you want to call it, because uh, it does kind of a little bit of everything. And then these two are, are kind of here. now. The actual time difference between them are, I think, tens of milliseconds, not much. Um, so please keep context in mind. That's how you do it. And you can use the same trick with since and acts and a whole bunch of other protocols that have commands and responses associated with them. Hope that helps, folks. Have a good day. Bye for now.